I've just gone on board the TubeTech OAG Large and I'm going to install it on the Ascar SQA70 rig that I've got behind me. Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. Well, I'm going to install this TubeTech OAG Large onto the rig behind and I'm going to bolt this to the TubeTech filter wheel. Now, the OAG comes uh, like this. When you order it, you ask what sort of size or order which size plate you want at the front, whether it's an M54, an M48 or an M42. I got the M54 um, version, so this is an M54 across here. Now, on the telescope at the moment, I've got an M48. So um, with the telescope, it came with this uh, M76 to M54. So I'm going to um, swap out the M48 adapter and put this M54 adapter on. Now, the other thing is that um, when you get this uh, OAG, this part here sort of sits pretty much flush on the top of the circle here. And if you'll notice, there is an extra piece um, just in, in here. And that comes uh, with the uh, off-axis guider. And you just have to undo some screws. I don't know if you can see them in there, but there are four screws in there. And you just unscrew those. And this bit here comes off. And then this little piece goes in. And they supply you with some longer screws. And then you can reattach it. I need to do that um, because this is quite a wide adapter at the top here. And when I went to put it on here without this extra piece put in, um, it actually hit and wouldn't close up. But now I can actually uh, attach it. So I should be able to screw the OAG large onto this adapter quite happily. Uh, actually, you need this piece. If you're actually going to use a Wanderer Astro um, electronic uh, tilt adjuster, you actually need to install this as well. So, um, yeah, just let you know for anybody who's got one or going to get one. So what I'm going to have to do, oh, the other thing, it comes with this adapter here, uh, which you actually put between the OAG large and your camera. And that way, if you're not using things like filter wheel, you've got the camera, which is 17.5 uh, mils, and you've got this, which is 20 mils, and then you've got the OAG large, which is 17.5 mils, and that will give you your, your 55 millimeter back focus. If you need that, because the uh, SQA70 has a Petsville design, I don't need to worry too much. But I do have an adapter on there at the moment, which is either 17 and a half mil or 20 mil. I'm not sure, but I'll be removing that and replacing it with this. So I'll be pretty close to the 55 mil anyway. But because I've got that range of focus that I can use on a Petsville design, um, I don't have to be bang on the 55 millimeters. All right, so you actually get some screws um, here, which, and, and there's an Allen key in there that you can use for undoing all the screws. There's some long ones, which I think are for the camera um, for, for this here. Um, and then there's the shorter ones where we're gonna um, bolt this onto the filter wheel. I've actually got a, um, a similar longer one, so I'm just gonna use that instead. And I've got to take these screws off here uh, to remove this plate because down inside here um, or on the back side anyway are the um, other bolt where I'm going to be bolting it to the to the filter wheel so I've got to take this plate off first so we'll just do that now Okay, we'll just put that aside there. So we're going to be bolting through, um, oh, we can see through these holes here onto the filter wheel. So I'm just going to, oh, that's a bit loose at the moment. That will get tightened up um, at the end uh, with, with this little screw here in there. So I'll just put that aside. Open up this bag and get the little small screws out. So 
So I'm going to, I had tape over here because there, there are these holes for the um, fil for the off-axis off -axis guider, but um, they will let light in and dust if uh, you're not using the off-axis guider. So that has to come off. Okay, ideally you want to be on, you can see that, the luminance there. Um, see them through there so that when you put the off-axis guider on uh, like so you can see where the mirror will be um, not obstructing the sensor so um, I'm going to line this up with uh, the holes and there seems to be one two three four five six and we'll um, get these uh, little screws put on Okay, it was trickier than I realized because you don't want to drop them onto the filter, that's for sure. Now, I'm just going to cover this up for a bit because I dropped a screw and I've got to find it. Okay, that was lucky. I found it. Yeah, very small. Okay, so the next thing to do is to put this plate back on. Put my glasses on again so I can see what I'm doing. around and make sure they're nice and firm because I don't want this to be not tight and I end up introducing tilt. Okay now it's a matter of seeing where this isn't going to get in the way of the sensor. And now it's a matter of screwing this back onto the back of the telescope. Okay, I had a slight hiccup because this hits this, so I had to undo this knob completely to take it off um, in order to be able to rotate it around and I've screwed it back on again, so... Tighten it up a little bit. And now it's a matter of putting the guide camera into here. So this is the TubeTech uh, guide camera that came with the um, camera. So I'm going to slot that into there. And from what I've seen from videos from TubeTech is I just need this piece on. Hopefully that will be enough and I can get uh, enough focus. And the, the idea is also to line up the, the uh, sort of rectangle of the sensor with the rectangle of the OAG. So that's going to go basically like that. And we're all done. You can see this gets pretty close to, um, I'll see if the camera shows it. You can see the camera, the, the, the filter where it gets very close to hitting this. Um, I did put up uh, it on, um, I got these things which raise the telescope up a bit, but it's still, let's move that out of the way, but it's still very, very close. So I think I'm going to have to have uh, the whole thing rotated around so that the, because this is a much longer than this, I'm going to have to just rotate this right round and um, have it like this and hope that this when it slews doesn't hit this but we'll, we'll have to see anyway that's the OAG on uh, attached the next thing will be getting a clear night uh, to make sure that I can get this into focus with this but you know hopefully it'll be all right so finally all done it's a bit tricky with uh, some of the screws they're quite fiddly and you've got to try and make sure that you don't drop the screws into <laughs> the filter wheel and onto your filters they're quite awkward, particularly when you're putting this, attaching this on. So um, yeah, you've got to go really slowly. Didn't help that I dropped one on the floor and uh, had a bit of a search, but found it hiding um, under 
the, the computer under the desk. So managed to get them all. All right, that's done. All right, well, unfortunately on the first night, I couldn't use this TurpTac guide camera. I couldn't actually achieve focus. Now, the reason being, the back focus requirements of this meant that when I added that little collar into the OAG um, between the sort of main body and the area where you insert this in and do the focusing, that was enough just to push the distance between this sensor and the pickup prism outside the area where it can focus. So I just I just could not get it close enough. Now I need that little collar in there at the moment um, because the uh, top focusing part um, of the OAG hits the connection to the back of the telescope. What I might do is find another little small extension just to pull that whole thing back a little bit so that it no longer hits the, the ring around the telescope. And uh, it means that then I could actually take that collar out and then I could use this guide camera. Because I don't have to really worry about the exact 55 millimeter back focus on the SQA70 because it's a Petzl design. It doesn't matter. I can I can push it out to 58, 59, whatever millimeters. So I might do that. In the meantime, I've been using the uh, ASI 120 Mono Mini in the OAG because that can achieve back focus. And uh, they worked really well the other night and I had some uh, good uh, guiding stats. The area was sitting around 0.45 to 0.55, so I was quite happy about that. So um, look, I can continue using the ASI 120 Mono Mini or I could make some adjustments just to uh, be able to accommodate this. So I'll see what I do in the future. So look, um, you know, that's how you attach the OAG uh, from uh, TubeTech onto the filter wheel. Uh, hopefully it's helpful for you. So look, until next time, wishing everybody lots and lots of clear skies.